Hi, I'm Tom, and I've always had a passion for cheap, fast sailing boats and making them better. This is my 2007 foiling moth that I recently purchased off Facebook Marketplace for just a hundred bucks. In this series, we're going to finish off the boat, get it out on the water, and then find out how fast you can go, how much fun you can have, and if you're even competitive on a boat that cost just a hundred bucks. Right, so it's Sunday night, uh, absolutely freezing. Got my hoodie, two pairs of socks, beanie, everything. Yeah, made really good progress today. Got the cano done and inside the boat. Uh, Vang's done. Now I'm going to work on the control system. So I've got the bow sprit just sitting there. Need to figure out how to attach that to the boat. Uh, see if I've got any glue kicking around to glue the uh, end of the bow sprit on. Get all the push rods in. Get all those linkages done. Uh, get the right height adjuster in and all linked up. Uh, get the one control into the boat, figure out where that's going to go. Uh, don't have a cleat for that yet, so I need to do that as well. Yeah, lots to do. But um, yeah, the complicated stuff's uh, slowly getting ticked off, so yeah, we'll keep going. So this is the push rod that uh, travels inside the hull and uh, basically sends the message from the wand that's touching the water back to the flap on the foil about how high above the water we are. Uh, as you can see, I managed to fill up the little tiny threads with mud, uh, thanks to my uh, working environment. but. After a bit of a rinse out, I was able to get the uh, bolt in there with some Loctite and uh, yeah, get that part together. I then thought I should just double check that the boat actually meets class rules. Uh, the bow sprit has to be less than 500mm long, I believe, from the uh, front of the bow. And uh, obviously it did. I think it's actually quite short. Like I think I had about 40mm up my sleeve there. Then I found this bit of gal oil thread kicking around. can't remember why I have it, but I do. And then I shoved that through the tube inside the hull for the one control line. So there's two tubes inside the hull, one for the metal push rod, the other for the one control line. Then I connected a bit of whipping twine to the piece of oil thread and pulled that back through from the front. Then I connected the piece of whipping twine to the Dyneema that I wanted to use as my control line for the wand and uh, pulled the Dyneema through with the piece of whipping twine. So basically this control line uh, adjusts the length of the wand, which is a stick there lying on the ground, and uh, that taps the surface of the water as we go along and tells the boat how high above the surface it actually is. Uh, if you lengthen the wand, the boat flies higher. If you shorten the wand, the boat flies lower to the surface. But it also um, affects this thing called gearing, which is like how aggressively the boat follows the surface of the water. So if you have a really long wand, it's going through a really big arc and it kind of feels really like floaty, like it's kind of just on clouds, but it won't really follow the surface. And then if you shorten the wand, uh, it'll go through a much smaller arc, but a lot more aggressively. So if you go over powerboat wake or anything, like you really feel it, like it bounces you around. So yeah, it's definitely a good control to have. And uh, yeah, it wasn't that hard to install. So what I'm doing here is just installing some little stainless lined fair leads so that I could run the uh, ride height adjuster um, sort of somewhere. So I wanted that to be kind of separate from the other systems because it's like a continuous loop. So I just got my steps drill bit uh, and uh, yeah, shove some holes in the foam and then epoxy these little fair leads in. So another friend of mine had these uh, stick-on pad eyes left over from back when he was running a TP52 back in the day and uh, I was just able to glue them onto the wings which was really easy and uh, then just lash a little block onto those for the continuous loop of the ride height adjuster. I used the genuine uh, Araldite this time because I had some and I like it a lot more because it goes off quicker. So yeah, uh, that worked really well. So because I had the stick on pad eye there for the ride height adjuster, I didn't actually need the fourth little block uh, that I had lashed on quite neatly to this carbon plate. So I cut that one off and then that gives me enough space to get my hand in to adjust the vang. So that was a bit of a win-win situation. So the ride height adjuster works by basically increasing or decreasing the length of the push rod inside the boat. So basically between the bow sprit where the wand is and the top of the centerboard uh, where the yeah, push rod goes down to the flap. So if you make the uh, push rod on the boat longer, uh, it makes the boat fly higher on average. If you make it shorter, it makes the boat fly lower. Uh, remember, unlike an aeroplane that can go up and down a few feet, we've got to fly within a window that's like 20 mil kind of thing for optimum performance. So you want to be able to settle this stuff like yeah, bang on. So you just wrap it around that barrel and then that's got a thread inside and uh, when you spin it, it gets longer or shorter. I'm still not sure if that's the right number of wraps uh, to go around the barrel, but we'll see what happens when I get it. 
And uh, this is just a bit of a close-up of the adjustable one that we were working on earlier, controlled by the green rope uh, in the cockpit. So you can see it's just like two tubes uh, inside each other. So at the moment I have uh, two cleats on the hull and I uh, have actually three control lines that I need to cleat off. Uh, unfortunately I couldn't fit another cleat in like how they were so I had to like take them all off and then move them along a little bit so there was space for three. I got sick of going to Bunnings and spending a fortune on uh, galvanized bolts so I decided to uh, invest in a pack of uh, stainless ones from uh, Nut and Bolt Australia which worked out way cheaper and it's so handy because I just have the one I need. I also decided to add the little like angled risers on the cleats so they face up towards me so it's easier to like cleat and uncleat. Uh, then uh, yeah, plenty of Tef gel because you're putting stainless bolts through carbon. So yeah, that was a bit of stuffing around, but I think it was worth it just to get the angles right. All right, so it's uh, Monday night now. Sorry about the lack of kind of talking and stuff in the past. Uh, yeah, a bit of footage. I've been sick of this for another couple of weeks, so progress has been slow, and um, yeah, I haven't had a really good voice for talking, so I haven't worried about it. And I figured I'll just do it with a voiceover later. Um, yeah, got this bowsprit on yesterday, really happy with how that's come up, got the uh, adjustable wand rope through as you saw. Um, I just noticed that it doesn't have a uh, nut at the end of this uh, bowsprit axle thing. So I've got that little kit of nylock nuts and I tried all of them and none of them fit. So I'm hoping that it's like a quarter inch thread maybe. So I've got a couple of quarter inch nylocks today. So I'll try one of those, and all going well, that'll be another job ticked off. Oh, look at that. Lucky day. So back to sorting out all these take-ups. I'll probably have to have like a sort of mini three-to-one thing, something like that, inside this void. And then, um, yeah, I've got to try and set it up so I can get it in there and sort of tight and then, but not so tight that I can't get the wing on. And then as it goes in, it's going to have to kind of tension itself. So I reckon I'm going to lose like this much just putting the wings in, which is why I need to have kind of three to one. So I still get enough travel between here and the back of the wing inside the void um, when I'm sailing. So yeah, it's going to be fiddly, but um, yeah, it'll be awesome when it's done because uh, yeah, my other boat had like normal trampolines, as you know. And um, the eyelets in the trampolines, half the time if the rope got a little like kink in it like that or something, uh, it'd get stuck and then you'd end up with just meters of rope on the trampoline. So I'm looking forward to sort of coming up with a way so that doesn't happen. But um, yeah, a lot of uh, fiddly work late at night to get it all sorted. Okay, so the theory with that is if I pull on one meter of Kano, because this is like a one to three system, the elastic only has to pull this 33 centimeters to suck that up inside the wing. So uh, that's the only way I can kind of think of to do it without running out of travel straight away. Um, I still don't know if I'll have enough here, but yeah, I'll try. Now the next thing to do is to put a lashing on this block. Actually, I should put the shock cord on the end of this one as well and then lash it inside the boat in that void so that, uh, yeah, then this is connected and then I need to get the shock cord inside all the way to the back, do that up and then bring that shock cord around another pulley and bring that back to the front so that uh, there's plenty of, yeah, tension on the shock cord and uh, room for it to travel. <laughs> Okay, so that's one take up done. Um, so as you can see, that's super fiddly and uh, super fun. On my old boat, it was all quite easy, but uh, yeah, this is um, yeah rather tricky. So now I've just got to do that five more times. Um, two on this side, three on the other side. Might be able to get this side done tonight because the one take up is going to be easier than the other two because it only needs to take up this much, so it won't need all the pulleys. 
So yeah, I won't bother filming the rest because it's going to be the exact same thing of uh, yeah, looking at the dark, not being able to see anything. And um, yeah, I'll just keep going and try not to scratch my hands too much. Okay, so it's uh, 20 past 10. I've finally got these three all uh, yeah, sorted. So that's the wand control thing, Cunningham, and they're all uh, yeah, inside there. Don't know if you can see them. Past. Yeah, I'll just uh, put the wing back on so it's off the ground. I've still got to do the main sheet bridle uh, inside this void as well. So I've got to get something through here which isn't drilled yet. Then put a stopper on the back of it. So that's another splicing job, but um, yeah, probably a bit late to drill now uh, in a suburban area. So yeah, I'll just put this wing back together and uh, yeah, go to bed. So there we go, two days of work. I just had to get that done because that's the kind of job where you could just put it off and off and off and the whole project just gets delayed weeks. So yeah, two days of uh, endless fiddling inside the boat where it couldn't really reach, but so happy. It's just smooth as silk. Like on my old boat, I used to have to kind of flick them and stuff to get them to do that and they kind of did it half the time. Um, that's just the best I've ever had. So good. So that's done. Now we can move on to uh, more interesting things. So probably tomorrow night, rig up and uh, suss out that front prodder length, main shape bridle position, get all that done. So uh, I had a message from uh, Scott from Western Australia, who's another person I've got to know through this channel. Uh, those uh, two carbon plates uh, that are on top of the mast stump there were kind of driving him insane. They drive me insane too, but uh, I'm just keeping them in there for a little bit longer in case I find a use for them. As you can see, Scott, I managed to lead the Cunningham through there just for you to make it a little bit less upsetting. Uh, but yeah, thanks for the message and uh, yeah, really appreciate everyone that writes in. So this was another job I'd been putting off for ages, but I had to do it. So as you can see, the Vang was just fouling the deck uh, fairing there. So in the end, I just got my hacksaw blade and just uh, sort of carved it off where it needed to be cut. This was kind of one of those jobs that I just got into. And uh, I remember I was just listening to a podcast about the Beaconsfield miners being trapped back in 2006 as I just kind of hacked away at my boat. So yeah, it turned into quite an enjoyable night of boat work, really. Uh, I was dreading it, but it turned out all good. And uh, I was really happy with how it came up. So I'm just untangling the stays here to take them off to get stretched, but I've since found out there's actually a better way to splice uh, in this situation where it's already terminated at one end. So I put a screenshot of uh, the way I should have done it on the screen there, so that next time I need to do something like this I can find it and I can uh, figure out how to do it. Alright, so Thursday night tonight, uh, no America's Cup, so good night to get stuff done. Uh, I've got my stays back from being pre-stretched, so they've been, uh, basically my work has a uh, sort of uh, industrial cable stretcher for like cables for bridges and stuff and um, yeah the guys were able to help me out and uh, put this on the giant hydraulic uh, beam for a couple of days and uh, we loaded it up to a number based on yeah what I read on Sailing Anarchy um, and then the data provided by the manufacturer and uh, kept it there over yeah a few days uh, at yeah really high loads way over what you'll ever see on a moth so really happy with how it came out. Now we're going to see how much it's stretched because 
You remember I made everything way too short because I was uh, pretty certain that yeah they were going to creep a lot. So uh, yeah, let's uh, whack it on the boat, whack the mast up, and uh, yeah, see how far we've gone uh, from the settings we had before. But first, I'm going to set it up with everything where it was before. So that was the top hole and the side stays, and uh, it just fitted on the fore stay with the boat breaker cranked on. So let's just put it there and see uh, yeah where we've ended up, and then we can adjust accordingly from there to our final settings. So I know on this channel I do try and find the cheap and easy way to do things, but uh, yeah, I think pre-stretching stays isn't one you can probably do in your backyard with uh, the loads required. Like it was, uh, yeah, pretty terrifying uh, hearing how much load was on them. And uh, yeah, I'm glad that I had the right equipment and uh, didn't try and tackle it myself. So uh, yeah, in the comments, Rob USA 4301 mentioned that you want about eight to nine degrees of uh, rake uh, measured from the flight of the hull on a Mac 2, and uh, as you can see, I was able to end up at about uh, like 8.5, 8.6 degrees. So yeah, really happy with where it ended up. Obviously, the soft shackle I'd made for the four stay with such care in the previous episode was uh, now way too long, so I had to make another one. And yeah, I'm really glad I did pre-stretch them in uh, and do it all properly as per yeah what I read on Sailing Anarchy because they did stretch from the top hole of the side stay adjuster there to about the fourth hole. So that'd be like a good inch that uh, otherwise I'd be chasing my whole life because I'd never be able to get it out under regular loads. So yeah, thanks for watching. Remember to like and subscribe. Uh, sorry about the gap in videos. I've been pushing really hard to get this boat done. But uh, yeah, uploads should be a bit more regular now. And uh, yeah, I'll see you next time. <laughs>